everybody, I'm just doing a bit of a throwback episode today and talking about playing Saga in 2024, and I'm going to specifically focus on five things that I still like about Saga in 2024, and then also just talk about a couple of particular things about it. Um, I have not played until recently Saga since prior to COVID. I don't really know how long it's been since I've played, but it's been a very long time. COVID, I think, was in towards the end of 2019. I'm sure it could have even been years before that. Um, it's been quite a long time since I've played. Recently on the Musty Wargamers, we have chatted a little bit about playing old games for the first time again, and um, just the sort of positives and negatives of that. And I knew that I was actually going to have an upcoming game of Saga. I suggested to a friend that I play locally with that we play Saga again, because I've. it was a game that I always really did like. Um, in front of you today, I do have my Scots army. Now, um, here, um, among other things, here, I, I have um, essentially... 12 hearth guard another eight warriors eight warriors eight warriors two different heroes that's Macbeth these are actually because my main army always historically has been Anglo Danes but I kind of have been most recently painted years ago Scots and started playing them I've been using the Anglo Dane slingers it's just Scots bowmen in my last game for levies because I didn't really paint up a separate set of levies they don't really it's harder to find um, models for the Scots for, for archers. They do exist, um, but I think it's pretty difficult um, to find them. Um, and I did find, I did get some Scots uh, slinger, or not slingers, uh, warriors with javelins and things like that too to add, should I want to, for the army. Um, before I go into the five things, I'll just mention that um, in addition to my Anglo Danes, I think something I've never shown on the show, even in the past, that I do have is. I didn't paint these, but I'm just going to pan over here. I do have some scralings, which, um, although not covered in the main rule book for the Age of Vikings, um, they are. There is a supplemental um, battle board that they provided to be able to use them. I bought these from a friend. They were a limited edition set. Uh, and I thought they'd be really cool to have. He had painted them, but um, the bases aren't done, and they're kind of got a glossy paint on them. It's sort of um, kind of like a what I would call a um, tabletop ready, tabletop standard, like three color paint job. And I thought what I might do is touch these up and finish these off, and down the road at one point use these uh, for fun. Um, I think they have a bit of an interesting battle board from when I remember where they kind of play the whatever the other battle board is from the other faction something like that it's interesting um at least that might have been the first edition I have to check for second edition what it was it might have changed the other thing I'm going to pan back again the, the other thing is um I do have some unpainted miniatures I have um when I was getting ready for this game I was like don't I have a war banner for the Scots and I do but it's just never painted it and so I have a a war banner miniature. I have a priest, um, which I believe is a type of hero that you can use in second edition. It's a Celtic priest, this particular model. Um, and then I do still have civilians and li um, most of the, the livestock I painted. I just hadn't painted up all the civilians. Um, and then um, that's mostly it uh, for the painting. Um, but I did play a game recently, and the preparing of the game and the playing it reminded me of a number of things as to why I really like Saga as a rule set. Um, Studio Tomahawk also does Musket and Tomahawks, which is really, particularly the first edition, I haven't really played much, if at all, of the second. After I'd gotten it, I did um, play a lot of the first edition, and I do really like that game. It's very different than Saga, though. It's not just... Um, I guess, Saga played in French Indian War. It, it it's almost has no relation in, in the way the rules work. Um, very little, I would say, probably. Um, both very good games. Now, um, the first reason why I like Saga still in 2024 and was really happy to play it and almost relearn it again, or start relearning it again, is the elegance of the rule set. And I think... Um, the first thing that I would talk about, there's a few things that I mean by that. One, 
the main rule book, um, which is used for multiple universes in the game, is fairly short in the grand scheme of things. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this really well, but in many cases, when they go over things that are typical in wargaming, like movement, for instance, as an example, I mean, I'll just pan out a bit. Um, oh, that's the most I can do. Uh, other than the clear illustrations, it's very easy reading. And movement, for example, goes from page 16 to page 18. And then there's just a really nice photo on page 19. And then it's, it's charging. Um, and then that's just really... Um, charging is just really two pages. And then you get into shooting. Uh, I found reading through this to be a pleasure to read again. And the way it's laid out um, and the way the rules are described is just very, very elegant and easy to understand and clear. Um, that's kind of what one of the things that I, I really liked about it. Now, the other thing um, is that movement is done with measuring sticks. Both proximity of models to each other in units and the, and the rules for proximity to form a unit as well as the way units move is really, really elegant um, and clear and used um, not with like sort of like just tape measure, but like everything is standard, has four standard distances. And so it actually, uh, granted, you, you can go less and in between if you want, but what you need to know are those four distances, like very short, short, medium, and long. And so I find even with range and, you know, your ranges and everything are using those same sticks. I, I think it's a very elegant system in that way. Um, yeah. So there are more aspects to it in me thinking that it's kind of an elegant system in the way it's designed. Very um, well thought out and... Um, not sloppy is what I, I would kind of say. Like, it's just kind of a, I don't know how you could call a rule set crisp, but it reminds me of playing Star Wars X-Wing in some ways, just with multiple models and units. Like, it, it actually has that feel of a really nice kind of um, uh, well well thought out game. Now, um, the other another thing, number two, is to why... I really like playing Saga in 2024 is the time it takes to play a game. Now, my favorite game right now to play, like I'm really into Warhammer Fantasy Battles, which is very different than Saga. And many people, I think, when Warhammer Fantasy Battles went on a hiatus, um, jumped into games like Kings of War and Saga. I think Saga got a lot of players, but Saga is very different in my mind than Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Um, Warhammer Fantasy Battles can take a very long time to play. You know, you're really can dedicating many hours in many cases to play a game. Yeah, the more you know the rules and the more both players know the rules, it's going to be less, and that always adds to it. And I just played a game recently, and although we had to look up a lot of the rules because neither of us had played a game in many years, you know, a standard game took us three hours, but I would say probably it should have taken us an hour to the most hour and a half is what I'd estimate. And it really felt like the round, the turns went very quick. Um, and so from that perspective, time sometimes is important. And, you know, maybe like sometimes I would play after work in the evening um, and, you know, you just don't have all day to play or you're not playing like on a Saturday or even if you are playing on a Saturday, you might have plans in the evening and you just need to get things going. Like you can't if you start late in the morning and then it's it's five, six o'clock and you're still playing something, then it can be an issue. And so I like the fact that you can throw this game down and have a fairly um, reasonable game within a reasonable period of time. Um, number three is the fatigue system, which is the resource management system currency within the game, that it is one way that you and your opponent interact as your units get tired for various reasons. You can use that fatigue, your opponent and yourself can use that fatigue to affect each other's performance. Um, and there are things that you do in the game to both uh, remove that fatigue 
um, and use that fatigue on your opponent that um, highly affects the game. Um, it's a very, another, I could almost say this is part of the elegance because you just put these tokens down and they have such a strong effect but very clear effect in the way the game works and in, in the melee system and the shooting system, the way you know it works when you enter terrain, like there's just so many aspects to it that it touches on. Um, and it's just a great resource management system um, to demonstrate effects within the game. Number four, I almost wanted to put this as the last but not least, like number five, because I think this, in a lot of ways, during my tenure of playing Saga was one of my favorite things, and or maybe is my favorite thing, but it's the battle board system. Um, the battle board system, if you don't know and you've not seen it, each army has their own system, and it's the thing that really does besides the rules you get for each army that will describe the differences among units from each army to each other, um, the battle board system is the thing that adds the most flavor and uniqueness and abilities and things you can do with one army versus the next. And it's a little kind of game that you do where um, it's a little sort of tactical tool that you do on this in the beginning of a round as well as on the side of of, of the the actual tabletop um, and basically rolling you know specific kinds of dice that allow you to trigger certain kinds of abilities and, and allows you to determine which units you can use in the round. It's very interesting. Um, we kind of started, you know, obviously used it in the in the game that we played for the first time in so long, but and, and part of it was kind of learning how to use those again for our armies. And um, it's great. I mean, I've heard people describe it as gamey, like, you know, feeling gamey. You know, the, one of the things about Saga, and they're very clear about it when you look at the book, is it's sort of like meant to be an epic mythic kind of game a game of heroes and tall tales you know big feats in history it's meant to it's not meant to be a historical simulation but a game like and it is in every sense a game like we're all playing games here but this is very much a game you know in that you know it's it doesn't feel as if you're like accurately trying to reproduce history on the table it's more a game that uses pieces that creates a historical look and feel, um, but also has like kind of an epic and game aspect to it that's fun. Um, and so the battle board does really well at that. And, you know, one of the things is um, there may have been games that have come out that utilize elements of the battle board in a similar way and pieces within them and board games and things. And I may not be as familiar with them, but I don't have any other games and I've not really been given the opportunity to play games that really have a system just like Saga. Um, I've heard of ones, like I'm not sure if the strategic component in um, A Song of Ice and Fire is similar, but that came out after Saga, and, and I'm not sure if it utilizes similar things as to the battle board. But overall, um, I don't have a game that plays like Saga, so it's unique in that way. And there was a time when I painted all these miniatures that I thought I'd really like to use them for like a standard kind of war game, um, and be able to utilize these Dark Age 28 millimeter models. And they, and there are games that I can do that with. And that's fine, but I have a lot of games that play like that, even Muscat and Tomahawks, that that where you're having a bit more traditional tactics, no battle board, and, and, and more looking at just from the models on the table and not all these other aspects of what's going on. But it'd be, for me, I wouldn't want to abandon Saga as a game that I play because there's no other one that has this, and it is so much fun. I really do like it. So, um, the... The last one that I would talk about is how easy it is to acquire a warband. Um, I'm playing the Warhammer Fantasy game right now, and to play 2,000 points, it can be quite a lot of models. And for other folks that play historical games, sometimes, um, you know, the bigger format, large mass battle games, like maybe something like, um, well, I know, like, um, Hail Caesar would be one that would come to mind. Like, you can really, particularly in 28 mil, have to paint a lot of models. I know that some of what is being potentially done to mitigate that is going down in scale, so the painting is is not as much to paint large armies. 
Um, but if you really like to paint 28 millimeter models and you really want to have be able to put something on the table fairly quickly and have a fun game, you know, this is essentially, this is more than four points. Like what I have right here, I'm guessing, well, I guess I could count it. I got like one, two, three, four, five, six points with two heroes. I know the, the Warlord you get for free, so I got another hero too. But it's basically six points, which would be like considered a large game of Saga. Um, it doesn't take that long, like to paint this up as compared to some other things. Um, and even that, like, I actually, um, this is an example of some of the first stuff I painted for the Anglodanes. I think that the, my painting improved a bit since painting these guys. These guys are fairly simple. Um, I really enjoyed um, painting the Scots. Like he's got the checkerboard uh, tartan um, on wrapped around his, his um, front there. Um, I um, found these guys fairly easy to paint because they're dark age guys. Like, you know, like they really just, it's not too elaborate. And so Saga does consist of much more than just Dark Ages, although that was the original universe, even in the first edition of the game. But, uh, but yeah, like it's, it's a fairly easy to paint and get into. Now, now that I'm finished just paint, you know, mentioning the five reasons why I still like to play Saga in 2024, one thing I'll just mention, um, an observation, and this is a personal preference, but I did find um, the only universes for second edition that I bought into was the the Viking Age, but I did also buy, except for one other, and that's the Age of Magic, which is the fantasy. I really was inspired by the um, Age of Magic when it came out. Like I really felt it was so cool because you really could use like any kind of miniatures that you wanted, and it was interesting how these units, new units in Saga in order to be able to play in the game that I really do like, um, but now in a different way. I wouldn't say that I'm 100% um, not for Age of Magic, but I much prefer the Age of Vikings um, over the Age of Magic after playing it. Um, I don't know for sure if this is the case, but my suspicion is that when adding a number of new types of units that are either combinations and variations of the original units with also additional rules in some cases. It felt as if the the balance in the game and the way it played became a little less stable for me, where it was actually really so good before in its basic form. Um, you can really argue any game that is not completely symmetrical, you know, at a certain point is going to struggle with that. And it really just is a matter of a number of things that, you know, it's where they need to accept it. And I really do like Warhammer Fantasy, and it definitely historically tr struggles in this area, given the large variety of the number of armies and things. I really found um, Saga performed best for me, and not as me winning, but just I lost... The more my, my opponents learn how to play the game, the more I was losing, to be quite honest. I would teach people to play, and initially I was really quite strong. Um, and then as they were learning it, I was like lo on the losing side more, but I always loved it as long, you know, I always loved the game despite that. And I um, found that I enjoyed the Age of Vikings more than the Age of Magic. Um, yeah, and, and, and it just for that reason. I just felt that it had that right structure even in version 2 when there were maybe some changes made from version the original version i still found it played well <clears throat> on that now i do know for folks that played saga much longer than me i came in at the tail end of the first version but for folks that played a long time in version 1 there were many that um, didn't like for various reasons the second edition um, that was really in the beginning of it i don't you know I'm speaking of it as something that maybe isn't played as much now, but I do know that there are a lot of people that still play Saga. It's not as much in my city that I know about, which is, there's a lot of gaming that happens in Calgary, but I do know that there um, are YouTube channels that still provide information on Saga, and there seems to be um, potentially tournaments and things that happen are happening. And so it is still a game that, as I understand it, is probably alive and well in many respects, but... Um, I don't personally hear as much about it anymore, and that's why I felt maybe doing this video to talk about 
um, saga in 2024 would be um, interesting um, to do. So anyways, if you still play Saga or had played Saga in the past and are interested in Saga and have, have any comments or thoughts on anything I said today or your own views, please feel free to, to give a comment and talk to you later.